Staying with volatility, Elon Musk has been all over the place this morning. He tweeted that his massive acquisition of Twitter was on hold until more details emerged on how many fake accounts there are on Twitter, only to then tweet that he is still committed to the deal after we saw Twitter shares sink in the pre-market. And one could argue things have become even more complicated for Musk given this broader market sell-off with some investors urging him to focus on the business of Tesla instead of Twitter. Throughout this saga, we have checked in with social media expert Jim Anderson, and Jim is back with us now. Good morning, Jim. Good morning. Okay. Um, I mean, you know, I, 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 I had tweeted that uh, Elon Musk had said the deal was on ice until he figured this out, and, uh, and someone tweeted back, that's just Elon being sarcastic. And I said, well, in my mind, I didn't tweet this, that, uh, look, it's, he said it and the market is reacting. So that's all we can take at face value right now. What did you make of this uh, back and forth this morning? Yeah, it's a, another tough day at headquarters for Twitter was my first reaction. Mm -hmm. You just mentioned, you know, popping Tums like candy. I mean, uh, you know, how must it be to, to be a senior executive at Twitter and have to deal with these realities while you're trying to run the platform? I, I do think it's a big deal. I, I, you know, it's possible that he's just doing this. He's just Elon being Elon. Uh, you know, the, the sort of mercurial Musk uh, is what you and I have gone back uh, and forth on. And that, that's possible that that's what he's trying to do. He may be trying to reprice the deal. Uh, you know, that's, this could be a negotiating strategy. I think I think the big concern is if he really substantively believes that there's a greater number of bots and false accounts on there. I mean, the Twitter is an advertising supported business. That's a big deal. I mean, ratings and, and the way you count your numbers and the way you count your audience is a big, big deal. So I, I think there has to be a lot of heartburn about whether there's any real substance to that or that's just Elon being Elon. Well, and like, it, this is an issue. I mean, I don't want to make this uh, about me or anything like that, but like, uh, you know, there are these crypto bots that are ready to place a tweet alongside every tweet that I put out, which is quite frustrating, quite frankly, as a, a user. And I know that that was one of the priority areas for Musk. But just getting back to the mood of the markets, I mean, you know, a lot of people are watching the headlines right now. They are frustrated with their losses or their paper losses. But I think this is a good example. Here you've got the wealthiest person in the world who just made quite a bet on this company and said, OK, I'll pay $44 billion for it. And then all of a sudden, the markets collapsed. Yeah, you have to wonder, too. I mean, he made this, his tweet a couple of hours ago this morning, and the markets reacted, and then he came back and said, I'm still committed to the deal. You have to wonder how many phone calls and emails he got between uh, you know, those two tweets from the people he's lined up to help fund this in investment. I mean, $44 billion is a lot of money, even for the richest person in the world. And we've talked before about heavily how heavily leveraged this deal is. So, it, you know, it's... Um, it's tough to know quite what to make of it. Clearly, the market doesn't know what to make of it, but his words have consequences. Like you say, the markets are open. Like it or not, the markets are going to react. And even when they're not open, they're going to react in pre-market trading to, to what he says. And so you, you have to believe that the people providing the financing, as much as they love his business savvy and maybe even his personality and his unpredictability, uh, you know, at some point, if you want to get this deal done, you may not be helping yourself by causing these wild swings and volatility. Yeah, and I wonder what happens with, you know, just opportunistic people in the marketplace just sort of uh, preying on these spreads between um, uh, what's being offered uh, and where the shares are trading. We already talked about that pre-market weakness in Twitter shares. Um, you know, obviously, anytime there are jitters about anything getting to the finish line, here in Canada, we've got this big takeover by... Uh, Rogers of Shaw Communications, uh, and given some of the headlines this week, you saw quite a reaction in the marketplace. We are looking at Tesla shares higher, though, in the pre-market, Jim. And uh, I made that point about those who maybe would prefer, just given this downturn and seeing Elon focus on Tesla's performance, just like, I mean, I made a reference to Apple earlier, Tesla's stock has taken quite a beating this year as well. Yeah, if I'm a Tesla shareholder, I absolutely would want Elon Musk to focus on Tesla. You know, he's got a finite amount of attention, like all of us. He's got 24 hours in a day. It doesn't matter how rich he is, and he can only spend those hours so many ways. And the more he's thinking about Twitter and bots and spam and Donald Trump and all of those kinds of issues, which are pretty substantive and pretty complicated, as we've talked about for a long, long time, uh, the less he's thinking about the future of electric vehicles and Tesla and, you know, how do they deal with, with all of their challenges. Challenges. So, yeah, I think you're exactly right. If I'm a Tesla shareholder, I'm encouraged anytime I think the Twitter deal is less likely to happen. Okay. 
We'll watch those stocks and trading today. Jim, always appreciate your time. Thanks so much. Jim Anderson, social media sector lead at Glasswing Ventures.